Hi, I'm Charlie Cooley. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on Hawkins School. This is such an exciting time for our community as we're making plans for Hawkins Centennial and for the largest capital project in the history of our school. As you take this video tour, you'll see that the plans for the new Gates Mills building are fantastic. And it's the right time for us to be investing in this new space. The academic lives of our students and faculty will be so well served by this new building, which is thoughtfully designed with Hawkins' progressive and innovative curriculum in mind. So I hope you enjoy the tour, and we look forward to sharing with you this exciting moment in the arc of our school. Stiernhalf is going to be the main academic building of the upper school campus at Hawken, named after Howard and Kara Stiern, the Kelvin and Eleanor Smith Foundation, um, who have made an $8 million challenge grant. Uh, if we meet that challenge grant um, with another $8 million of philanthropy, the building will then be fully funded. Board of Trustees and Visiting Committee have given $8 million so far. It's a $24 million project. My name is Ellen Stearn Mavek. I am uh, Chairman President of the Kelvin and Eleanor Smith Foundation in Cleveland, Ohio. There were a number of reasons why the Smith Foundation decided to uh, support this great project. Certainly the leadership of Scott Looney and the Board of Trustees, their vision uh, for what education should be today and where they want to take the school. The building is an appreciation of uh, creating and an appreciation of sharing and an appreciation of being in magnificent environment where the kids will really respect the land around them, the building that they're in, as well as enjoy its um, contemporary facilities that will help them learn and engage even better. Well, the school's mission is forward focused preparation for the real world through the development of character and intellect. I would say that the shortest version of, of why Stearn Hall fulfills the mission is that it will do two things. It will improve our ability to manage the climate and culture of the school, which is how we build character, and it will give us the teaching spaces and the common spaces necessary to have an active, hands-on learning approach to the intellect. We now have our biggest kids in spaces where it's literally impossible for them to get up and move around. We would never do that in an art class. We would never do that in a science class. I don't think we should ever do that in a history class. Our, our history teachers, our English teachers, our math teachers should be able to get up and have group projects and have the do, kids do, do active learning and performances in class without having to spill out into the hallways or without having to, to be shoulder to shoulder. We literally don't have the square footage we need in the classrooms to teach the way I'm asking the faculty to teach these days. The research on teaching and learning is really compelling. Kids learn best by doing, not by sitting and listening. You can do that in seven or 800 square feet. You can't do that in 450 square feet. It's just impossible. Westlake Reed Laskowski came up with a contemporary building that still respected our traditions, but it also provided the mix of spaces that was needed for the faculty with the innovative curriculum and the innovative way we're teaching now. We created a number of new specialty spaces such as the fabrication lab, the media lab, the media production lab, and the screening room. Uh, the building also has a new science wing. Lastly, we have a number of open spaces for uh, collaboration and individual study and the most notable of these will be the new learning commons. And in the learning commons we also have our writing center and our learning support center. I just think it's going to lend itself to a totally different atmosphere than um, our school building, which currently has, you know, the AC lobby, but that's a location for the masses, if you will. And I think that it will just have a different feel to it when you're walking through this beautiful um, space that is open to the outdoors in a different way as well, that really brings the environment of Gates Mills, which is so beautiful into the building. So I guess it's an atmosphere that I'm looking forward to. It's going to be great to have the new spaces and the larger rooms and sort of wider expanses and views of the great lawn from, from all over the building, which, you know, in so much of the building right now, um, that's sort of blocked off. It's, you'll have the Fab Lab and the Media Center and all these great spaces. But what I think you've really got is 
a, a, an impetus for more growth and more change among the faculty and, and new ways of, of learning and, and teaching students that we actually haven't even thought of yet because we don't have the space to sort of inspire us to do that. Um, I think there's just a potential for, for an ongoing climate of sort of creativity and change, which has really become the standard here so far, that if you want to try something new, do your best, see what you can come up with, and maybe you'll create something truly great. And I think the new space is going to enable, enable so much more of that than we have right now. I think that it's amazing the type of success Hawken has had in the facilities that it's used, and I think Hawken could continue to succeed as is, but the world is changing all around us. and. The new building, I think, will move Hawken into new generation, for lack of a better term. Uh, community spaces that are very important, usable spaces for the students, more room for the faculty. I think that it blends the tradition of the Hawken School and Hawken School education very well with the need to progress into the future. I think it's a much needed uh, change at the upper school campus. Uh, the dated building is not suited with the school's uh, initiatives. I know from my Spanish and math classes that uh, the rooms get very hot uh, in some parts of the building as uh, the air circulation isn't great there. Um, I know we have a dated HVAC system, so that's not exactly providing an ideal learning environment for many. Also, the size of many classrooms, especially in my humanities class, uh, the space is quite small, and so when we're having to, ha or when we're trying to have a class discussion, uh, it gets very cramped. Well, I'm definitely quite jealous of the new lower school that just went in, and seeing the fourth, my fourth grade brother uh, get this, these new classrooms. Uh, uh, they allow, from what I understand, a better learning environment. Students get to do uh, what they're going to do in one part of the room, and the teacher can either watch or can get involved because the rooms are big enough. Uh, for that to happen. And they're also big enough for a discussion to occur, uh, uh, such as a round table, and they're, they're conducive to that. For the students, I'm very excited because this will be a much more invigorating place for them um, to do their four years. But for the faculty who spend 20 and 30 years, they deserve a better home. They deserve a better place with more light and better air and greater sense of collegiality and, and greater sense of community and our current building isn't great for that and the new building will be awesome. Well, there's of course like the obvious things like the skywalk and the cafe that are definitely going to be very exciting for students. I feel like this new place can be so cool and I'm really excited to see what it looks like.